No matter where you look, every country on earth has its undesirables. Whether that's the Chav in the UK, the Bogan in Australia, pure 100%, level 99 Aussie <laughs> Bogan, <laughs> or French people. <laughs> However, there would be one class of people that would completely take the world by storm in the mid 2010s, and that is the Gopnik. <laughs> Now look, here in the West, if I told you there was a group of people that would spend a lot of time sat in a squat or eating sunflower seeds, you'd probably think I'm talking about some new health trend. However, in Russia, it's quite the opposite. This is a Gopnik. So the exact origins of the word Gopnik is pretty debated. Some say it's an acronym GOP, which stands for Gorodoskoi Obshaziti Proletaritia. What? Which is basically the pauper's house. You know, it was like the charity housing for very poor people after the October Revolution in 1917. And in fact, a YouTuber by the name of Real Russia pinpointed the origin of GOP to one building in particular. This building, the place where all the Gopnik story has started. But then others claim that according to the Russian Dolls Explanatory Dictionary, the word GOP is old slang for just living on the street. But you see, this wasn't the Gopnik that we know and love today. It wouldn't be until 1984 with Zoo Park's song called Gopniki, the Gopniki, where the Gopnik could get its true identity as a subculture. So whilst the origins of the word might be kind of unclear, what was meant by the word Gopnik was very clear, and that was a criminal. It's basically used as a slur against a young man who is probably not that well off, who spends most of his day drinking vodka and bumming cigarettes off a stranger. So let's get into what Gopniks look like. Before we go further with this video, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, which is Soundcore by Anchor and their new headphones, the Liberty 4. So these right here are the Liberty 4 and they come in this little convenient case which charges the headphones. They have up to an impressive 9 hours of playtime with the charge and 28 hours of stored charge in the case. The audio quality is insane, they're so clear. They have a premium sound which is delivered via ACAA 3.0. This means you get a really deep punchy bass, really accurate mids and a very clear treble. One of the coolest features is the 360 immersive spatial audio so the headphones have a built-in gyroscope and they can sense where you are in space so there's literally an algorithm that tracks your head movement and keeps you in the center of the audio meaning that if you're watching a film you're gonna get a 3d cinema like audio experience it's super immersive there's two modes of spatial audio you've got music and movie so it'll give you the perfect audio experience in different scenarios what's also cool is they have a built-in heart rate monitor so it will track your heart rate if you're wearing them when you're out running or maybe you're going to the gym and you can monitor that by going to soundcore wellness in the app right now between those November 21st and December 4th, you can get $30 off your pair. So definitely check the links below to get yourself a pair. Anyway, back to the video. Starting off with the head. For haircut, it's pretty simple. You just want to shave it all off into a buzz cut. However, if you're feeling fancy, the more flamboyant a Gopnik might have had what was referred to as a gangster's quiff, which basically looks like the barber's clippers ran out of battery mid haircut. Now that you've got your nice new trim, you want to hide it away under a flat cap, something that Thomas Shelby might wear. Or if it's extra chilly outside, you might want to treat yourself to an Ashunka. If we head down to the feet, the Gopnik was known for wearing these very classy leather pointed shoes, presumably for all the important business conversations they were having whilst they were huddled together. How is this quarter? Will Boris, phone robberies are up. Record high cigarette collections also. Good. But then it's important to look at what equipment the Gopnik had in his inventory. In one hand he would hold on to a cheap light beer or maybe a vodka, but then in the other hand he would have a pack of sunflower seeds, also known as Simichki. Simichki are full of vitamins, micro elements that make Gopnik healthy and strong. Enjoying a nice pack of sunflower seeds with the boys was just a pastime for the Gopnik. You know, it was an opportunity for them to exchange thoughts and contemplate existence. And so these boys would just wolf a pack of sunflower seeds and then throw the husks on the floor. Much to the distaste of the wider Russian public, who would look down on the mess that these people would leave. And then, of course, there was the cigarette. Probably sitting out the corner of his mouth, maybe behind his ear or in his hand, which he had no doubt bargained with a stranger to have for free. But there is one key piece of Gopnik attire that we are completely overlooking, and that is Adidas. Adidas to Russians is what self-hatred is to British people. Yeah, you can't have one without the other. And many people wonder why there's this link between Russians and Adidas. Why do they love it so much? 
The Gopnik's love for Adidas can be pinned to one event in particular, the controversial Summer Olympics of 1980. This Olympics was hosted in Moscow, Russia, one year after Russia had invaded Afghanistan, and America wasn't too happy about that. So 65 countries, including America, chose to boycott this Olympics. Neither the American people nor I will support sending an Olympic team to Moscow. Which for Russia was good news, because it meant the competition was far lower and they walked away with 41 medals and winning the Olympics. And so these Russian athletes would be seen as like these heroes of communism. Well, sort of. You see, there was a problem, because if you looked at the outfits that these athletes were wearing, you might notice there was two stripes down the sides. This was Adidas. Adidas being a company from Western Germany. And to the Russians under the tight control of communism, Adidas represented the evil Western capitalists. They would need to remove logos and the stripes and no one would know it was Adidas. And so when Adidas left Russia after this Olympics, they left behind with them tons of factories that you could produce Adidas equipment with. And the quality of the Adidas products was far superior to that of what the Soviets were able to make at the time. And so Adidas became this high-end brand whose clothes were exclusively made for the sports teams. Your average Joe wasn't allowed to have Adidas. And in fact, they even made a knockoff version of the Adidas Gazelle for the Soviet Special Forces, which they called the Mokba, which means Moscow. And so as you can imagine, if you could get your hand on some Adidas, it was big bucks. This kind of illegal black market trade of Adidas popped up where people would be paying months wages to get a hold of some Adidas. But on the 9th of November, 1989, everything would change. Notice that hole in the wall? Well, that's what's causing it. As the Berlin Wall crumbled, the Iron Curtain fell. Russia was no longer hidden away from Western influence and an influx of Western products came into Russia. And quickly they realized that Adidas wasn't that high end. It wasn't like Chanel or Versace. It was just sportswear. And so this once classy Vogue item fell into the hands of the Gopnik. You see, in this period, business in Russia was very connected with crime. But you would have these high end mafia bosses rocking up to business meetings wearing a full Adidas tracksuit. I mean, can you imagine that? I, I literally once got fired from a job for not wearing a tie. And as well, what happened was that a lot of these athletes after their career would struggle to make money and would turn to crime. And so when they were sent to prison, they would wear their Adidas tracksuits. And along with this connection to crime, you'd also see just knockoff versions of Adidas popping up everywhere with things like Adidas and Abibas. And so the Vogue status of Adidas was lowering by the day and was now the hallmark of the Gopnik. But look, if no one else was gonna love Adidas, the Gopnik's love for Adidas was till death do they part. I mean, them boys were infatuated with Adidas. They would write songs about Adidas. You'd see cars decorated in the three stripes, and if it wasn't for trademark, I'm pretty sure the Russian flag would just be an Adidas logo. But part of the reason for the love for Adidas was that the items were just very comfortable, and there was a great range of motion. And that's a very good thing for a Gopnik, because there is one thing that is more important to the Gopnik than Adidas, and that is what is known in the West as the Slav Squat. The Slav Squat is a cultural phenomena that very few people know the origin of. You know, people wonder if the Gopniks are secretly yogis aligning their chakra, or if they're trying to tone up their beach bums for summer. But no, it's believed that when Gopniks were sent to prison, these prisons were often very overcrowded with very poor facilities to sit down. And it's in Russia, and Russia in the winter gets very cold. Prison in Russia is like a criminal freezer. You, you probably come out the same age as you go in. And so the cold as well as the filth on the floor, no way to sit their ass cheeks down. And it is there where many believe the Slav squat came from. But look, aesthetics aside, the Gopnik is more than just a fashion icon. They're in fact men of culture and leisure, who of course need to pass time one way or another. One of those ways I mentioned is petty crime, and they would perform what was known as the Gop Stop. Damn Gop Stop and two smoking barrels. Which was basically a polite mugging. You'd go up to someone and ask to see their phone, or if they could spare you a cigarette. So this, combined with loitering around public areas, was how Gopnik spent most of their days. But you see, the Gopnik is a lover of art also, most notably the music stylings of hard bass. 
This is a genre of music that emerged in the 90s in St. Petersburg. And to try and put into words what it is, is nearly impossible. It's like hard drums with this metallic sounding bass. It's extremely fast and in your face. For those of you with a less sophisticated palette, you might not get it. And along with this, there was a tie-in for an enjoyment of uh, class A's. But as well as hard bass, as Western influence came into Russia, hip-hop became popular as well. And throughout the 90s into the early 2000s, we would see Russian Gopnik rappers popping up. But look, the general feeling towards the Gopnik in Russia was not exactly admiration. They would often look down on the Gopnik and see them as like an underclass. And much of pop culture would poke fun at the Gopnik as being these uneducated, unsophisticated people. And they'd be ridiculed in comedy and television. <laughs> But you see, what's interesting is the Gopnik was really kept very isolated to Russia and other Eastern European and ex-Soviet nations. But then for the rest of the Western world, that would all change in 2012. The Gopnik wave was coming. It's believed in late 2012, an anonymous post of 4chan would bring Gopnik culture to the West. Very quickly from here, 4chan would create the meme Why Does Slab Squat? Leading to the creation of the Reddit r slabs underscore squatting, which nowadays has 116,000 subscribers. And from here, the Gopnik meme would just continue to grow and eventually explode in 2016. Suddenly, for whatever reason, this hated Russian subculture had now become the love of the West. Endless memes and YouTube videos were created showing Gopnik culture. And it got more and more bombastic and probably quite far removed from what Gopniks really were. But that aside, this ironic love for Gopniks would eventually transcend just being a meme. And in fact, bring with it a wave of post-Soviet fashion to the West. Around 2016, a wave of new designers had really become popular. Most notably, Gosha Robchinsky, as well Tigran of Vetician and Outlaw. A collective of trendy boys who would bring this look to the West and massively popularize it. We would see many celebrities wearing Gosha and this kind of sportswear-infused Soviet style. A lady by the name of Katrina Zolotru, Bouvia. Nah, I tried. Who's a fashion editor for Vogue Russia. She directly called this style Gopnik, describing it as like the bad boys of the suburbs of Russia and 90s influence. Do you consider yourself a fashionable person? No, I'm just a dude. And look, there are plenty of articles that talk about this like Gopnik wave of fashion, particularly around the mid to late 2010. Like I myself remember around this time wearing like Adidas tracksuits. I mean, I'm even wearing some now, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I was dressed head to toe in Gopnik style. I would even loiter under bridges with my friends. Yeah, I was one step away from having a pack of sunflower seeds and pointy leather shoes. I think for a lot of us in the West, there's kind of a fascination over the mysterious nature of Russia. You can see that with the success of the YouTuber Bald and Bankrupt. Russia and ex-Soviet nations is such a different world than what we're used to. And so when this Gopnik meme spread, it kind of gave us a unique glimpse into their world. Yeah, was it 100% accurate? Maybe not. Was it exaggerated? Probably. But ultimately, it gave us a little insight to this very unique and fascinating subculture. And just how many parallels there are to similar subcultures we have here. So shout out to the Gopniks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.